Hi, my name is Moira Tran and I am a top shelf financial model analyst. Today I will be discussing loan interest expense. So first um, we're going to be talking about what it is, kind of give you definitions and then how to calculate it and then I'm going to go into our top shelf model here and this is a multifamily development model and I will be explaining how we calculate it um, so on and so forth. So typically whenever I am auditing a client model, one of the most common mistakes can be found within the debt section, specifically the interest expense. So often the issue lies within calculating the loan interest expense. So what is loan interest expense? Loan interest expense is a cost that is incurred when borrowing funds. Interest expense is a non-operating expense and is included in the lever cash flow section of a cash flow model. So I can show you that right here. So we'll go here, we've got the unlevered section, and then down here we've got the levered section, and here you can see that we calculate all the expenses. So um, it's located in the levered section of the model. This non-operating expense can be found on the income statements and occasionally balance sheets. The loan interest expense can be paid on a current asset, which occurs as a prepaid interest expense, or on a current liability, which occurs as interest payable. The interest rate on a loan varies depending on the specific type of loan. For example, a typical interest rate for a construction loan in real estate can vary anywhere from 4.25% to 5.5%. So right now here in the model, you can see that our interest rate, and I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it, is 4.5%. Um, but typically, if you have a MES loan, it would be somewhere around 13%. MES loans are just typically higher in general. So... Uh, that's just kind of a little example there, and so I guess we can go into how to calculate the loan interest expense. So the loan interest expense is calculated based off of the outstanding loan amount. Um, for example, if we say like we have a, we can go over here. If we have a loan that is $1.5 million, we can go ahead and make that a money sign. And then we have an interest rate of, let's say, 4.5%. So we can just use this 4.5% over here. I'll put that over here. We'll get rid of the borders. And then let's say that we have a, you know, the time would be kind of a monthly. We want to pay this monthly. And so by paying it monthly, this would be in 12 uh, month increments. So we'll just put 12 there. This is the rate, and this is the loan amount. So in order to find the interest rate, we would take this, we would take the loan amount, multiply it by the interest rate, and divide the interest rate by 12 because we're doing monthly periods. And so your loan amount would be $5,625 um, over a 12-month period. And so let's say that Instead of maybe paying monthly, you're going to pay annually, so once a year. So the thing you would do here is take the loan amount, multiply it by the interest rate, and then divide it by one because it's only one period. And then you would get $67,000. So um, that's just kind of a really quick example of how to do it. We will go ahead and kind of show you how we do it in the model here. So right now I am in the multifamily development model. Um, there's construction debt and permanent debt here. So we'll go ahead and go over to the monthly cash flow section. And here in the monthly cash flow section, we have the interest expense here. And so this interest expense, um, the formula looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually really simple. So first here, this first part, it just it's just saying um, it wants this date or the month to be between the beginning month and the end month of the loan. So, you know, if the loan begins in month, well, I guess we can go and check. So the loan begins in month zero and it ends in month 29. So that's what it's saying. It just wants to make sure that the month is within the dates so that it can start calculating. You can see here, though, that um, it doesn't start calculating until we make draws. And that's because in our model, we use all the equity up front first before we start into the construction loan. So equity first, and then you kind of use the proceeds from the bank. So after it's determined that it's between the dates, then there are three different methods to calculate the loan. And so if you go here to the assumptions tab, you can see the interest calculation is either actual 360, actual 365, or 3365. And this just means that 
So here we can kind of dig into formula. And this basically just means that, let's say, if we choose the actual 360 method, it'll take the interest loan, divide it by 360 days, or the interest rate here, 4.5%, divide it by 360 days, and then multiply it by the number of days between the current period and the previous period. So if we choose actual 365, what it does is it takes that interest rate, divides it by 365 days, and then multiplies it by the number of days between the current period and the previous period. And then the last method, the 3360 method, is it takes that interest amount, divides it by 360 days, and then multiplies it by um, an average of 30 days. And so obviously, all these methods are pretty similar, just a little bit different, but you would have to read your loan docs in order to make sure that you are calculating the interest correctly. You're either dividing it by 365 days or 360 days, you're using the actual dates, or you're using the rounded 30 dates, or the average 30 dates per month. So that is kind of how we calculate it. And then once you calculate that interest amount, you're multiplying it by the beginning balance here in row 152. And that's just kind of how you calculate the interest. So we also have, in addition to the interest, we also have an interest reserve for our construction loan. And the interest reserve can kind of get a little bit complicated. But basically what the interest reserve does is it reserves the amount of interest expense that you'll need, but it offsets the interest expense with any kind of positive cash flows. So here, you know, in month, what is this, month three, we can scroll up here. You can see that we aren't getting, we aren't making any kind of positive cash flows um, in month three, so you're gonna have to reserve the whole entire amount. So if we scroll down here, we're not making any positive cash flows, for, so we're still reserving the full interest loan amount up until month looks like here month 17. So if we click in here month 17 and then we scroll up, you can see that it's offsetting that interest amount here with the positive um, almost 10K of cash flows. So now all you have to reserve is that 67K minus the 10K and that would get you to about 57K. So we are again offsetting the positive cash flows with the interest or we're offsetting the interest expense with the positive cash flows. And that is kind of how we calculate that there. So you can see here, as we're making more and more money, we're offsetting it. And then here in, what's this, month 22, we only need to reserve 2K. And then after that, until the construction loan ends, we don't need to reserve any money because the positive cash flows are greater than the interest expense in each period. Um, and so that is just kind of how we calculate the interest expense. One other um, thing that I want to point out is the interest here. And the interest, the way that you kind of select the interest is also very important. So there are two different methods when selecting your loan interest. And the first method is just having a fixed rate. So if you go to the assumptions tab here, you can see that we have a fixed rate of, well, you can either select whether or not you want the interest to be fixed or floating. So you can select yes for fixed and no if you want it to be floating. Right now it's fixed. And if it's fixed, it just means you're gonna have a steady 4.5% each period over the duration of your loan. And you can see here in row 150, we have 4.5% throughout the loan duration. The other method that you can use, which you know, in contrast to the fixed interest rate, is a floating interest rate method. So we'll go back to the assumptions tab here. And if you don't want the interest to be fixed, you'll select no here in our model for floating. You would have to enter some sort of LIBOR cap, which you know could be like 10%. You don't want the you don't want the interest to go over 10% in the floor, which would be, I don't know, 2%. So you have a cap and a floor, which is just kind of the highest it can go and the lowest it can go. And then you have a determined spread. So the way it works is that in a floating interest rate, it's the interest rate that vacillates, you know, with the market or index and a determined interest rate spread is added to that market index every month. So here, um, you, again, you would have the cap on the floor. And then here at Top Shelf Models, we use the LIBOR, and that's kind of our market index. So we get our LIBOR here, and, you know, we kind of copy it in, set it all up. So we've got our LIBOR, and then we'll go back to the assumptions tab. Where is it? So we've got the LIBOR tab, and you can see here now when we go to the monthly cash flows, you have your LIBOR curve that changes every month. We've got our cap, which is 10%, our floor is two. 
And so this would change every month depending on your interest. So right now it looks the same, but if we went here and kind of um, added a little bit more detail, we can see that it's 6.5 here and then it'll change depending on the rate to, let's see. Here. So now that we've entered our LIBOR cap and our LIBOR floor and we select that we want a floating interest rate, we can go over here to the monthly cash flows. And you can see that our LIBOR tab or our LIBOR curve is pulled into the model here. Um, it changes every month. So I'll just add a couple more decimals here. Oops, other way. And so you can see we have 1.76, 1.73, et cetera, and it all changes. And now when we go here and we open up this, we can add a bunch of zeros there. You can see how during the months here it changes. So it just vacillates a little bit, um, not too, too much. And you can definitely see that, you know, the LIBOR curve changes. So up here, because the numbers are, you know, pretty much the same, it's not, you're not gonna see much change. But here at the end of the curve, you can definitely see how the rate is changing. So yeah, that is kind of how we solve for the interest rate here. If you have any questions, concerns, please let me know. Thanks for watching this video.